BKFC middleweight world champion, Tiago Pitbull Alves. And his opponent, one of the most electrifying fighters in the game with a reputation for leaving everything in the ring and a style that's earned him the king of violence belt, Platinum Mike Perry. All right. All right, gentlemen. Uh, Mike, many fans, man, consider you to be the face of bare knuckle fighting. Um, on April 27th, how are you going to prove that to Tiago? King of Violence stays home with me, baby. <laughs> uh, for the pit bull here, what, what, what do you think, uh, Tiago, facing off against Mike Perry? Uh, both of you are undefeated right now. Uh, what type of fight do you expect? I expect a war. You know, uh, Mike is definitely the face of BK, uh, BKFC right now. Uh, you know, exciting dude to, to fight against uh, on a very exciting night. And uh, I'm ready, man. I'm ready for this fight, and uh, I'm going to be the king of violence. No, sir. I'm going to keep it clean. I'm going to have a, a soapy performance. I'm going to um, touch you up. I'm going to get in and out. And, um, man, simply put, like, like I don't... <sighs> You, you ready for a war, and I'm going to go in there, and I'm going to stick and move. I'm going to box, and, and let's see what happens after four minutes. Let's see if you choose to get up off that stool after four minutes. I mean, uh, you kind of, I, I never see you stick and move before. You know, you're kind of stiff. You're always there to get hit. So that's going to be a first. You, uh, I'm looking you and the game. rest of the fans who think they know what they watching, but I know boxing much better than you, sir. You think you know what you're watching, but you don't know nothing. Everybody got a plan until they get punched in the face. Yeah, I agree with that. And, you know, I'm going to be punched in the face, too, so we'll see. You are going to be punched in the face. That's what you said. Yeah, I'm going to be punching you in the face. That's okay. I'll break your hand. <laughs> Mike, what do you... about uh, it. I was like, Mike, what do you, uh, what do you, what do you think about um, Tiago's layoff? You think uh, the rest will help him, or will it uh, be I, a detriment? I think if he coming for a check, I'm going to break his neck. Tiago? I mean, you can look at two ways, right? Um, I haven't taken any damage in a very long time. You know, I'm fresh. I'm excited. Um, yeah, the layout, you know, it's never a good thing. Uh, this fight was supposed to happen a long time ago. Uh, for reasons that, you know, doesn't make sense to talk about right now. It didn't happen. Uh, he's definitely, you know, the face of BKFC anymore uh, right now. He's definitely uh, been active, you know. So everything is going for him. But I like my odds, you know. I believe in myself. I believe in my training camp, you know. I believe in my pedigree. And think uh, the layoff is not going to mean anything. I'm going to get there on April 27th. And I'm going to be the king of violence. What motivated you to come back? BKFC? Uh, two things, you know, the, the paycheck, of course, and uh, the opportunity. You know, Mike is a phenomenal fighter. You know, he's an exciting dude. I think he's fucking hilarious, you know, and uh, that's a big show, uh, Nakomania 4. Be able to headline this show against Mike Perry, you know, it's a good opportunity, so I couldn't say no. It ain't gonna be so funny when I'm in there getting you. Uh, it goes both ways, brother. I, I know what you're talking no. about. It ain't gonna go both uh, ways. It will. Trust me. It Listen, will. Listen, I was looking Eddie. I was looking at him through the barrel of the gun. And I was at the end Eddie's of that second round. Fiber. I was pointing at him like this. Ooh, ooh, ooh I got you. I found fiber. you. I found you. Two in a row didn't last more than four minutes. I fought eight minutes last year. So maybe your two years off won't matter. But it doesn't matter. You could train boxing for the rest of your life and never be better than me because I was born with the swagger that I bring into the boxing ring. Well, there's only one way to find out, right? You're so right. We're yeah, we're going to get there. But we're here to talk about it today. No, we've been talking about it. You being so nice to me. <laughs> I am a nice guy. You know, I've always been a class act. You know, I've never been a... No, you mugged me once. I'm old school, bro. You mugged me mugged once you. from back in the day when I you was coaching <laughs> mugged. Not like robbed, but like oh, mean okay. mug, Like a mean mug. When? Back in the day, you was coaching somebody. I was cutting weight on the card. I was like 172 pounds this day before weigh-ins. And you was coaching someone on the card, and you was mugging me in the hallway. <laughs> <laughs> and I never forgot that, bro. I hold grudges. I think you're just hungry, bro. You're probably hungry I at the time. I hold grudges. You're imagining stuff, you know? 
But yeah, dude, whatever you gotta say, you know, whatever you gotta do to pump yourself up, do it. Has this been a fight, Mike, that you've been uh, waiting for, looking forward to? I love the fact that, I mean, he has, other than Julian Lane, Julian Lane had nine bare knuckle fights. He has two. He also beat Julian Lane. Um, Eddie had one bare knuckle fight. Obviously, they all had much experience in other in MMA competition, world championship fights. The best thing he's ever done is lost to George St. Pierre, and George St. Pierre couldn't box with me in there either. He wouldn't even think about coming over here. So, you know, um, I just don't think. Look, it don't matter what I think. All I know is when I get in the ring, bro, and I tuck my chin, I'm more violent than you. I'm more savage than you. I got a better chin than you. I want to fight more than you. I box more than you. I would have never left for two years. Tiago, what are fans going to see on April 27th? Uh, They're going to see a beautiful performance by me putting away the golden boy, Mike Perry. I'm not gold, baby. It's platinum. <laughs> All right, let's go to Cyrus right now. We've got some questions. This is Gabriel Gonzalez, Cage Side Press. Mike Perry, can you just talk about what it means to you to be the man at the very top of an event named Knucklemania? <laughs> uh, I like to fight, and I'm going to knock out his lights, and when he wake up, he will be all right. And <laughs> Tingasso way. Mike, Brandon, BroBible.com. Uh, this outfit you're wearing is uh, pretty, pretty excellent. I'm wondering if you could talk us through it. Shout out, shout out, LA. You know, I, I had to rock it for, I had to rock it for the West Coast. Look, 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 look. We ain't, we, we might be some type of slave up here. We a couple of East Coast boys finna put on a show for y'all in the West Coast. A uh, couple of East Coast boys gonna throw down, and I'm a Cut them up, bust them up, bloody them up. And, uh, you know, I might trickle a little bit, too, just because I like the blood, baby. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Sorry. Um, Frank Olaga with FightHack.com. Tiago, um, being that you were the inaugural middleweight champion in BKFC, um, is that a goal of yours with this return to get past Mike and get some gold around your waist? Uh, one thing at a time, you know. Uh, we'll see. Um, I'm 100% focused on a fight on April 27, and then after that, we'll figure it out what's next. Um, Mike Perry with the win over Thiago Alves, it would just put you in line for possibly a bigger fight. Um, I know in the past you had a stare down with Conor McGregor in the ring. Um, you're obviously looking for a real big fight so you can put big KFC on the map. Um, getting past Thiago, do you think you'll get something like that long down, uh, further down the line? I think this is a really big fight. Because it's a Mike Perry fight, and um, I have an experienced former bare knuckle world champion who did not lose his title. He vacated his title until a bigger, better opportunity fight came along, and Mike Perry came into bare knuckle fighting championships and started smacking people up in four minutes or less. So... Let's see if Tiago makes it into the third round. If he chooses to get up off of that stool, he's a fool, and I'm going to put him in the pool. <laughs> Great rhyming, bro. <laughs> On that note, gentlemen, I cannot wait for April 27th. If you would please step off the stage and let's do a face-off. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you very much, gentlemen. It's going to be filled you. with championship gold. Please welcome to the stage the current pound-for-pound pound king of BKFC, the double champ, Lorenzo the Juggernaut Hunt. Yeah. 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 What's up, baby? AC Slate. What's up, brother? What's up? Good to see you, man. And facing off against them will be the hard-hitting world heavyweight champion, UK's very own Mick Terrell. Pleasure. Gentlemen, please have a seat. Mick, 
You're from, uh, you're from the UK, of course, the birthplace of uh, Bare Knuckle. Uh, you're used to fighting heavyweights, and, and Lorenzo is not. Do you feel he's, uh, he's bitten off more than he can chew here? Um, the biggest part of Lorenzo is his mouth, which is going to be easier to punch, I'm afraid. Hmm. It's very serious. Uh, <laughs> Uh, being ranked the number one pound for pound uh, bare knuckle fighter, uh, Mick, in the world, how do you stay motivated and continuously strive to, to improve? Um, I like beating up big guys. So this is kind of like uh, one of my favorite things to do in the world is to prove these big mouth fat guys wrong. They think fine, that fine. because they're heavy, got it, that they can beat anyone, but they're wrong. Thank you, huh? That, and and Mill, do, you, Mill, do you feel like a win over uh, Lorenzo on April 27th will make you the pound for, top pound for pound fighter in the sport here? I'm not too sure on the pound for pounds. Obviously, Lorenzo, I've, I've got a lot of respect for the way Lorenzo fights. He's good, you know. But, like, pound for pound, what does that actually mean? Does it, I mean, really, pound for pound, if you're, if you're five stone and you're fighting a 12 stone man, and you, you're going to get beat off a 12 stone I'll man. I'll tell you what it means. It means that anybody, anywhere in the world that stands in there with me is in more trouble than they ever been in in their life. And it's been proven. I have the most knockouts in BKFC. I have the most wins in BKFC. I, I am the king of you. BKFC. And the only reason you got that belt is because they gave you the shot before they gave it to me. I think I've got more knockouts than you actually. I've had 10 penalty fights, I've stopped eight. Listen, we're not talking about what goes on over in the UK. We're talking about what goes on right here in the great America. And that's where you at, and that's where you're going down. You're going down right here. The belt is staying right here. We don't care what you did over there fighting them toothless bums. You finna come over here and fight the best in the world. Your thoughts, Mick? Lorenzo, I'm not being funny. When you get put on the back foot, and I will put you on the back foot, and I want to punch you very, very hard. How? You're too slow. You're too flat-footed. Lorenzo, you, you, you send telegrams when you throw your punches. Your hooks come from about four miles away. What's a telegram? <laughs> <laughs> Stop the games. Listen, You're older than listen me, but... there's a reason I'm here, folks. Uh, Mick Terrell got lucky. He took the belt over, overseas with him. I'm here to bring it back home. Look, I'm, that's what I do. They call the assassin. I am the best bare knuckle fighter in the world. And they called a specialist here to come bring that belt back. You're the best at beating up little people. That's a bully. Everybody. No, not everyone. I watch your sport. You keep sparring little people. Yeah, you don't spar big people. I don't need to. All I need is you, your face. That's all I need. All I need is you can't take a shot, Nick. I've watched you take punches and take a knee. I've never taken a knee. I've watched you. So and you're, me. You don't, don't got it. Don't you don't got it, Mick. <laughs> Mick, what is your prediction for this fight? I'm going to put Lorenzo on the back foot, and I want to punch him very hard, lots of times. And he's going to be, I'll tell you what, Lorenzo's very explosive. Lorenzo's going to be good for about two to three minutes. And then the weight's going to start getting you. I'm going to lean on you. I'm going to push you on the back foot, and I'm going to catch you straight on your chin. And I cannot miss it because your mouth's that big. And you're going to sleep. Lorenzo, what's your prediction, sir? I'm bringing the bell home, it's as simple as that. And um, when Mick Terrell shows up fight night, he's gonna realize he's in the ring with the most violent, vicious, bare knuckle fighter in the world. This is not back home where you guys were fighting for crumpets. You right here fighting for real money in America and you might not make it home if you keep running your fucking mouth. Lorenzo, you're getting dropped off middleweights. You're getting dropped off middleweights, come on. That, that makes all the more sense in the world. Smaller guys can get in, they can get punches in that you can't get in. Their reaction time is faster. Mike Richman was a monster, and I put him away. And I, oh, I was a good knockout. I'll, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. It listen, was a great I did, I like I did what had to be done in order to be a multi weight class champion. You've never challenged a cruiserweight. You could never do what I do. There's no one in the world that could do what I've done. I'm the Irish BKB champion, a cruiserweight. I was a cruiserweight. I used to fight little. I'm now a heavyweight. I've fought heavyweight lots of years. What will you be after I sit you down? I will be jumping. You will be crying, most likely. Mm. Well, gentlemen, right now, let's get some uh, questions from the media. Cyrus, go ahead. Yeah, so all right, we got from the Mike and Misha. This is for the champ champ, uh, Lorenzo Hunt. Can you put into words how important winning this fight at Knuckle Mania 4 is for you? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I can. Um, after I assert myself as the most dominant 
bare knuckle fighter in the history of the world is that, that has ever done it. I'm going to travel the world and basically challenge all the other champions to a bare knuckle fight uh, for bare knuckle FC. Then after that, I'm going to go around all America and just give all the tryout guys a chance. I'll make it simple as a talent scout. If you knock me down, you get a contract in BKFC and I'll give you a $10,000 sponsorship. Anybody in America who can knock me down can get a contract. I'm looking past you, bro. You can't, you have nothing for me, Mick. Lorenzo, if you knock down Phil Edge. You'll be an afterthought shortly. I'll be a what? An afterthought. Nobody afterthought. will know you anymore. You're going into retirement, into the ether, with the, the rest of those guys that ran their mouth about what I could do to them. They're gone. The people I fight, they don't fight anymore. Lorenzo, can I remember after I won that title, I won the press conference, and you said, I would not come back. Unfortunately, mate, I'm back, and I'm going to hurt you. I like that about you. Uh, Mick Terrell said I'm his favorite fighter. Why? You're good. You're great to watch. I like watching you. Then you know what's about to happen. Yeah, I'm going to burst your lips open. Mm. <laughs> okay, gentlemen, one more from the media. This is Frankie Olagio with iHype.com. Um, this is kind of a double question here for Lorenzo and Mick. Um, being that you're chasing your third division world title, um, obviously that's just bigger than just what's on the line. You know, it's kind of cementing your legacy as a bare knuckle fighter. Um, Mick, uh, do you want to keep him from receiving such status in the BKFC, um, winning uh, th th uh, titles in three divisions? Do I want to win titles in three divisions? Oh. Oh. Sorry, I didn't hear what was said there. Well, I'll answer for him because he's a little slow. He's already a little punchy. Um, anyway, so it's not that he even has a chance to keep me from becoming the, the, the triple world champ. What he needs to do is try to make it home the way he came here because I'm going to be swinging and knock pieces off of Mick Terrell. He's bigger than me, that's true, but he's soft. Look at him. He's soft everywhere. I can punch you in your tit and knock you down. Bro, you're soft everywhere, and this is you after training. You've been training now for about two months, trying to get ready for me. You lost about maybe 15, 20 pounds, and you're still soft. You're still soft. A body shot will put you down. Lorenzo, you threw your shots from like five meters away. And you're too slow to move. I'm telling you now, you will get caught as soon as you throw a wild hook. You'll get caught with a counter punch straight down the middle. Risk and your life for a jab. You cannot fight Risk on the back foot. Risk your life for a jab, buddy. Risk your life for a jab. You cannot fight on the back foot, and you know you cannot. You know what I, I love fight about, on the back foot, you know the what I love about unconscious people? They never say I'm sorry. They never say that they were wrong. They're always right. Even when they're asleep, they woke up and they don't know what happened. I'm going to knock you out. They gave me a knockout bonus. They paid me extra to knock your ass out. I'm gonna knock you out, bro. You've lost your money. You've lost your money, I'm afraid. You're gonna get no money. Okay, gentlemen, one last question before our face off here. Hi, Adriana Noriega from ABN Sports and Fox Deportes. This question is for both of you. Would you guys be able to give us a description of how you visualize the, fi the fight going on and at the end, how do you visualize the victory going? Basically, Lorenzo's gonna come out flying like he always does. That's what makes him good. He's gonna come out flying. He's gonna get caught with a couple of counter shots. I wanna put Lorenzo on the back foot. The stamina's gonna kick in. I don't think Lorenzo's gonna have it. And I'm gonna knock Lorenzo out. Um, I can give it to you. Um, this guy is really slow. He comes out really slow. It's almost like he's stuttering in his brain and the way that he thinks. I'm going to come out flying. I'm going to press him. I'm going to hit him in his belly button. I'm going to hit him in his tits. I'm going to hit him everywhere that he <laughs> expect that he couldn't train. And then I'm going to touch that jaw. And when I touch that jaw, he's going to change. He's going to start swinging wild punches. When he miss, he's going to look up like he fell asleep driving. Anybody ever fell asleep driving before? When you wake up, you're going to be like, Shit, I could have died. <laughs> well, gentlemen, we're going to find out how it all goes down April 27th. If we could please uh, step off the stage for a face off. Thank you, gentlemen. Big talk. Dead man. Dead man. Dead man. 
All right, up next. Uh, April 27th is going to be monumental in the night of combat sports with so many great matchups right here in L.A. for the first time in California. Cannot wait. Today I'm being joined by the fighters that are making up the epic card. First, I would like to welcome our hard-hitting heavyweights making his debut in the squared circle. We have Todd Duffy. Pleasure. And standing opposite him, a seasoned veteran with an unbeaten record in BKFC, Big Ben Rothwell. Let's give it up. All right, how are you? Well, that's a... What's that's... up, press people? Yeah! Yeah. All right. Ben, I, shaking Ben's hand, that was... Uh, I can't imagine that with the... <laughs> Just off of that, d d Ben, describe what Todd's going to feel when he... Uh, he those knuckles face. He's, uh, he's gonna feel oh, my me. knuckle right now because he brought a scale and I know he's up to. He's trying to talk some big shit. So. Uh oh. I don't he, know if he, he's he, afraid of the scale or me. That's all I'm trying to figure what, out. What I do know what happened is he back in November we met in Utah and uh, you know I was like oh how big he is this and that. Well I'm 20. I'm, I don't know if you can tell I'm clearly 20 pounds down from then so I'm I'm feeling in tremendous shape. Really looking forward to this fight. I'm bringing everything to Todd. I'm not taking him lightly in the slightest. Uh, I owe him the fight. But when he's seen me, all of a sudden, I, I kind of seen his gears turning, and next thing you know, he's turned into the flower man. He's out, like, distributing flour to all of our, our people here, and I'm like, this guy's out to sabotage the show now, because he's he seen me. I, I'm worried maybe maybe he's the one that's going to back out now. So, you know, he's bringing a scale, he's bringing everything he can, so... I'm here to make the fight happen, and uh, ho hopefully I didn't scare him out of this. Well, well Todd, as a, as a former UFC fighter, man, making your debut here at uh, BKFC, what, what excites you most about competing? I'm, in I'm just here to give Ben his flowers, like he said. You know, nobody wants to fight Ben. I'm here for you, buddy. See this? This is, yeah, he's trying to dumb us down. He's trying to make, I, mess the whole card up. I'm just trying to make sure if you can help you sort whether you're afraid of the scale or you're afraid of me. I think it could be both, but we don't know. Maybe it'll help you sort things out. I'm here to give you your flowers. You definitely hit the six-foot bong for you out here because <laughs> you're out there. But, <laughs> Todd, uh, uh, pardon me, uh, Ben, Todd's never fought in a bare-knuckle fight. Um, what, what does he have to look forward to? Honestly, I, I am not sure too much fun for him. I mean, this, this is a tough, this is a tough sport. Uh, bare knuckle is, uh, it's not for everybody. But I do know him and I are going to put on one hell of a fight. Uh, we're we're going to set the bar for the for the two fights after us. Um, Todd and I only know how to fight one way, and I mean, I think that's why the owner, you know, David Feldman, is so excited for this fight. Todd and I kind of like. He just want to share with you, we actually have a good relationship and a lot of people in the MMA community we've made friends with, so it was only funny that now him and I have got to talk and got to know each other. This is about as business as it can get. We're, we're in here, we have a good time. He's, he's the kind of guy I could literally be friends with, or pretty much am. We're almost like friends, but we're going to do business and you're going to watch what money, what prize fighting is all about. Like, we're literally going to try to kill each other on April 27th to... Uh, the, the glory to all the fans who are going to get to watch that spectacle. It's, it's going to be a hell of a fight. And uh, the, the fights after us are really going to have to, to bring it. They're going to they're gonna have a fight to live up to. Well, that's a real gentleman. You could be friends outside of uh, the ring. But once you step in, everything changes. So, Todd, with this opportunity to challenge for the world uh, heavyweight title, uh, how does this impact your, your mindset, how you're approaching this fight going in? I'm super excited for all that, but I'm just focused on Ben. I know what he is. I know who he is. I know what he's all about. And like I said, I think it's going to make for a more exciting fight. Um, nobody wanted to fight the guy. Like I said, I'm here to give him his flowers. Uh, I don't think he's afraid of the scale. I don't think he's afraid of me. I think he knows what this is, and he was sick, and I get it. Like, this is a dangerous, scary... I mean, in hell, I'll be in good company. That's all I can really say. You know, we're going to hell, and that's yeah. where we're going. Well, man, I can't in wait. In hell, I'll be in very good company. We'll be there with you. Uh, gentlemen... Good luck, Cyrus. We have any questions? Yeah, we got one. We got one right here. Go ahead and uh, say where you're from, and go ahead and ask your question. Um, it's Frankie Olagi with FightHype.com. Um, this question is for both Ben and Todd. Um, being that this is the first sanctioned BKFC event in California, is there any pressure to deliver? Um, obviously, you guys are friends to some extent, but um, once you step into that BKFC circle, is there any pressure to deliver? I don't know how there's not pressure in there. It's fire. It's fire the whole time. You're in the hot pocket. There's nowhere to go. There's nowhere to run. There's nowhere to hide. It's a fucking nasty war. And like I said, in hell, I'll be in good company. 
It we, doesn't matter where in the world we're going to do this. It's This is the fight. we got to go out and perform. All the eyes are going to be on us. And, I mean, it's bare knuckle. It's the closest thing to an actual street fight. Like, I'll kick this table out of the way and start fighting them right now. Like, bare knuckles are ready. They're ready at all times. We're ready to I'll go. I'll hit you with a scale. We're so, we're, <laughs> Let me scoot back. We, we are some of the most dangerous people on the planet, you know what I mean? Because we're practicing it so real of what we do. And But to bring this to California, this is a huge move for BKFC. This sport is blowing up in a rate that's just unbelievable. The ownership and everybody behind BKFC is just doing such an incredible job. And I am very honored, and I'm here to give my very best to blow this event up and to bring BKFC to the next level. Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. One yeah, more we, question. Yeah, we got another one here. Uh, this one's from the Lights Out podcast here, and Mike Davis. This one goes to Ben. Uh, your opponent is much larger than your other opponents. Uh, do you think that not being able to bully Todd Duffy will make you alter your game plan? Absolutely not. My, my game plan is simple. He knows what it is. I'm coming in there to beat your fucking ass, period. He knows it. I know his game plan. It's pretty similar. And there's going to be a clash. There's going to be a lot of blood, and fans are going to love it. Uh -huh. And then we got one right here from the Mike and Miss show here. It's for Todd Duffy. If Ben wins the fight, he's basically a shoe in for the title. Do you think you're going to be given the same opportunity if you come out victorious at Nelcomania 4? No doubt. I'm fighting the best heavyweight in the division. It's not a secret. He's the boogeyman of the BKFC. There's a reason they're having me fight him. So, yes, this is, this is the number one contender's title fight. And, yes, I do expect to have a title fight after I win this fight. You hear that, Mick Terrell? He just pulled his pants down on you. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, thank you very much. It's now time to face off. You can step down off the stage.